Neuroastronomy is a study of the brain on flavour. Flavour is one of the most multi-sensory of all our experiences. The most important thing that I tell my students is that the most important tools that they have in the kitchen are their senses. My brain will guess that if I see something red, it's probably going to be sweet, and if something green, more likely to be sour. Tastes and flavours also have shapes attached. On average, we spend six years on the old seer, such a half season. We enrich everyday life. On this episode of Mythbusters, we're going to test to see if a, knowing the color of a Haribo gummy bear affects one's perception of its flavor. The main focus of this statistical query is whether our eyes tend to deceive us. Is green apple really green apple, or is it the food coloring that's doing the trick? This experiment is bound to help us put human tasteability to the test. To conduct the random assignment for this experiment, we used a random number generator and numbered all 60 subjects, 0, 1, to 60, and used the random number generator to collect the first 30 numbers, which corresponded to 30 people in the experiment. There were no repeats used. The first 30 numbers generated corresponded to the first 30 participants that would go in the group in which their eyes would be closed during the experiment. The rest went into the group where their eyes would be open. We first asked our subjects to either close or open their eyes. Next, we randomized the order the subjects would be eating the gummy bears in. We recited the five flavors the gummy bears could have been. Pineapple, orange, strawberry, raspberry, or lemon. And handed them the gummy bear. And asked what flavor they thought the gummy bear was. Raspberry. For the state portion of our significance test, we first had to find our null and alternative hypothesis. And so to do so, we used uh, our null hypothesis as there wasn't a difference between the two population means. Uh, the one population mean those that complete the experiment with our eyes open, open and the other with our eyes closed. And then our alternative hypothesis was that there is a difference between the true population means of these two populations. If the conditions are satisfied, we will perform a two sample t test for a difference between true means. And so there are three conditions that we have to satisfy in order to complete this test. The first being random. There wasn't any sampling, so we don't need to satisfy the 10% condition, but there was random assignment using the number, random number generator, as we said, so this condition is satisfied. Then for the large counts condition, both groups were greater than 30, so this condition is satisfied as well. And then we are able to perform our test because these conditions are satisfied. The results of our experiment reveal a fascinating insight into how our minds will usually convince us of something that isn't necessarily true. It shows how different food companies can use their knowledge of the psychology of taste, sight, and smell to their advantage so that they can make a product that is more efficient and cheaper. If a company knows that the deciding factor in detecting flavor is really sight and vision, then they won't have to spend as much money on food flavor. And here are the results. For the grouping of subjects who completed the experiment with their eyes open, the mean proportion of correct guesses was 0.8. We suspect that the most common error was the discerning between strawberry and raspberry. For the grouping of subjects who completed the experiment with their eyes closed, the mean proportion of correct guesses was 0.56. There is a clear difference between these two proportions, but is it enough to be statistically significant? Let's conduct a two-sample t-test for mean to find out. Since our p-value is less than our alpha significance level of 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. We have convincing evidence that the true mean proportion was different for each grouping. Our experiment went very well, yet in a true scientific fashion, there are always aspects that could be improved or furthered. We could have reduced the bias of prior knowledge in this experiment. Many of our subjects may have had prior knowledge of the taste-to-color relationship from pri prior co um, consumption of Haribo gummy bears. We could have furthered this experiment by using a lesser known gummy bear brand. Are you very hungry? Do two have what it takes? To separate taste from color. I want gummy in my tummy. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching Mythbusters Stats Edition.